Welcome to another edition of One More Light with me, Val Klein Hands. I have Logan Dawson with me. She is a content creator into holistic wellness and self love. She's also a podcaster like me. We're going to talk about all the things. Logan, I am so honored that you're here. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I I have to admit, I've been a big fan of your podcast for a while now, ever since we started following each other. So yeah. I'm I'm honored to be here. Oh, thank you. So I just, you know what the deal then we talk a lot of mental health here. And I yes. was curious since you're very into the holistic side of wellness, do you believe that we can use holistic measures to improve our mental health? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, when you really, when you really think about mental health in the sense that it is a part of who we are, like our, our mental health, our brain, our whole physiology, our psychology, it's, it's who we are. So when you really peel back the layers and you come back to basics, like it really has a foundation of holistic wellness and like a whole is holistic aspect to it. So yeah, thousand percent. Cool. Well, have you tried anything holistic that has helped with your mental health? I would say the biggest thing that I have gone into, well, two things, meditation and journaling. Those are the most like inexpensive. Mm -hmm. They could be what you make of it. Um, and definitely when it comes to mental health, there's so much going on in today's world, in today's society. And I think when you really just come back to basics, like connecting with yourself, connecting with your thoughts, connecting with your body, kind of becoming one with that whole realm. I think that's really what the definition of holistic is, is it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be like this, you know, wake up at 6 a.m. and go to the gym and buy a green yeah. smoothie. Like it doesn't have to be like that, you know? Yeah. So, so meditation and journaling have been the biggest, you know, game changers for me when it comes to my own wellness, but then also my own mental health. So helpful. I love a period of mindfulness as well and journaling, like especially when I'm at work. I don't know why, but I like to journal at work usually because that's mm -hmm. where the most ah, comes out yeah. and I'm like, yeah. ah, I need to just scribble it all down. Oh, yeah. You brought something important to my attention because honestly, when I, I think for most people, when they hear the word holistic, they think herbs or like medication. They don't, you know what I mean? Or like yeah. natural medication. That's what they yeah. think. They don't think that it's something more general than that. They don't realize that it's something natural, like mm -hmm. mindfulness or meditation right. or very simply writing down your thoughts. Yeah. So do, do you run into that from time to time where people are kind of confused at first and then you have to be like, well, holistic is more than just X. Oh yeah, definitely. Like even when people ask me what I do and I say, oh, I'm a holistic health coach or I'm a holistic wellness coach. Their first question is always, oh, well, can, what diet plan can you put me on? What nutrition plan oh. can you put me on? What, what like supplements, what vitamins do you recommend I take? And it's like, yes, there is an aspect to health that can be vitamins and supplements and stuff like that. But when we look at like the holistic realm, like that, that has nothing to do with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, there's definitely a big disconnect. I feel like when a lot of people first think of holistic wellness, they kind of like leave out the holistic part and they just <laughs> hone in on like, what is wellness? What is health? And that right now in society just seems to be vitamins, supplements, weight loss, you know, that whole, that whole world of it. So yeah. Yeah. What got you into holistic wellness to begin with? So I, I have my degree in nutrition. I, I have my undergrad in nutrition and dietetics and my, my spark of, I guess, like my passion for holist, holistic specifically started in college. So I think I was, I was a sophomore in college and just as I was getting into nutrition, I was also kind of learning like how to heal, but using very like, I guess, holistic approaches to things. So mm. I was kind of going through my whole like acne struggle, you know, I still am from time to time, but instead of like turning to topical stuff and going on birth control and trying to kind of heal it that way, it was more oh, yeah. of a like, what teas can I make? What meals can I make? And then from there, I kind of just like went down this rabbit hole of like, 
we have so many resources at our fingertips, like literally just outside that a lot of people don't know about that can, that has the power to heal everything that, you know, that's going on. And so I think knowing that and knowing the power that nature holds and that whole holistic realm of it, it was just like one thing after another. I was like, I want to keep learning. I want to keep applying. And then, Mm. and then it got to this point where it was like, I want other people to know this knowledge because, you know, even like my mom, if you go into her vitamin cabinet, she takes a vitamin or a pill or just literally for everything. And it's like (laughs) seeing that. And, and even like growing up, it was always like, Logan, take your, take your pills, take your vitamins, or if you get sick, take your antibiotic. And, Mm. you know, so growing up kind of like in that household and then now learning that, everything I need can either be from outside or from nature or just from a very holistic aspect. It's like, now it's like this, this, this chapter of like reclamation of like, I don't need that. I have, I have my holistic stuff. And so, yeah, it was kind of just like a domino domino effect from there. Do do you teach your mom anything about like what you're learning and is she interested in, or does she feel like she's learning along with you? Some stuff. Yes. Um, but other stuff, you know, she goes, she gets her checkups, she goes to the doctor yeah. and, and they're always like, like she has, she had Lyme's disease, for example, years mm-hmm. ago, but even now she's still kind of like learning how to live with that. Cause it's not really something that just like goes away. So yeah. stuff like that, she trusts her doctor more, which like, I can only, I can only influence so much, you know what I mean? <laughs> Moms are going to um, Yeah. Like I I've tried and there are some stuff that she still comes to me, you know, especially with food and like vegetables Mm. and like what meals to make. Um, but that, yeah, when it comes to, you know, that deep stuff, it's kind of like, she is, she's just in her own world. And, and I mean, if she feels that she feels great, she feels better than what she was. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna interfere. Yeah. I got you. It's about respect. I totally understand that Yeah, for sure. I see, uh, speaking of food, I see the recipes from time to time on the Instagram. Curious, what is your favorite recipe when you need something just for like comfort food or you need like some comfort materials to maybe get you through a bad mental health day? I would say this is, you know, it seems like such an easy question, but like now (laughs) that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm like, oh my God. Um, I would say, yeah, there's so many. My, I think- no matter what my comfort food will always be pasta. Obviously. Give me a good creamy pasta. And, and I, and I'm like, I'm, I'm thriving. I know. I'm just starting to get into like the veggie noodle version of Mm -hmm. pasta and I'm finding out I like it. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, I like, I hope my Italian grandmother in her grave isn't rolling (laughs) over, but I'm like, this isn't bad. This is yeah. bad. Like I, I love it. And it and it's still just as comforting because it yeah. is essentially pasta. It really doesn't taste that much different either, which no. is weird to me because I'm kind of a picky eater. Yeah, I, I well, am too. I just I like simple. I call it simple eating. I'm a simple mm-hmm. eater. I don't really like sauces or condiments. That's when people say I'm being picky, is when I won't add things to it. And yeah. I'm like, a burger is a burger. If it's yeah. with just cheese, you do with you. just cheese. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I know. What, so what has your self-love journey been like? Because that's something else that you post a lot about too. And I love to hear people's perspectives on what's worked for them or where the, that journey has taken them. What, what's that been like for you? So I would say my journey started probably back in 2018 was my, I guess I would call it like my rock bottom. So mm. 2018 was, it was a very dark year, but also a very pivotal year. So long story short, I was going through breakups. I was going through the loss of a grandparent. I was, I was going Mm -hmm. through a lot that year. I was also navigating disordered eating. Um, so it was, it was a lot of like not knowing who I was and not knowing how to find who I was. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of where my journey started. I graduated college in 2018. So I was like fresh out of this, like nutrition and dietetics. I had this degree. I don't know what I want to do. I'm into wellness, but also like my life is in shambles. I don't know who I am. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's not. Um, 
so yeah, that's, that's where my, my journey started. And I started posting on Instagram. I was doing a lot of like recipes. I was doing a lot of, um, like workouts. And from there, it was kind of just, once I learned that I really enjoyed doing something, I kind of then it was like, it was a domino effect. So I really loved learning about holistic wellness. And then from there Mm. I was posting recipes. And then from there I got into intuitive eating. And that's kind of really how I came out of this whole disordered eating phase that I was in from intuitive eating. I learned, and from working with women, I learned that like, you can have a really, really healthy relationship with food, but if you don't heal the relationship that you have with yourself first, Mm. nothing can really stem from that. So after learning that, and after kind of having this whole like epiphany on my own journey, that's when I really got into self-love because the more I learned about other people, the more I worked with other people, the more I learned about myself, it was like everything stems from my relationship with myself. I can't show up for other people if I can't show up for myself. I can't, you know, heal other people if I can't heal myself. So that was kind of where I got into self-love. And it's really interesting because I feel like a lot of people they get into this role of being, you know, a healer, a coach, a mentor, a guide, Mm -hmm. thinking that they have to be that person first. But for me, it was kind of like, I wanted to be this like self-love coach, not knowing that trying to be this role was actually what led me to be in this role if that makes sense. So I stepped into, you know, I wanted to be a coach and I wanted to help people with self-love. And through that, I then learned how to have self-love for myself. So Mm. yeah, I think, I think that it's kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg type of thing, you know? (laughs) So, so yeah, that's kind of, and then from there, it just kind of, it just kept evolving. And now I'm at this point where like, I know who I am, but I'm also still learning who I am with a lot of like grace and patience and acceptance. And, and yeah, so we're, we're, we're in the midst of it. We're still learning. We're still moving along, but it's been, I mean, five years since my, my journeys started and, and it's, it's always evolving. Yeah. I I ask myself all the time, like, does anybody really know what's going yeah. on with them? Like, is there ever a point when anybody really feels like I've got this and I know who I am and yeah. Bob, I don't, I don't, I don't think we do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we do at any age. Like, I don't I really think we don't. do. No. I, I ask myself that all the time. You touched on something pretty important too, and that's the value of peer support and collaboration and how doing these things can teach you inadvertently things about yourself it's that social interaction that we need Mm -hmm. you know which we forget sometimes especially now that we've seen you know what we can do without it since without social interaction since the Mm -hmm. pandemic we're forgetting this now but I believe yeah I, I mean I believe in trying to bring some of that back and I absolutely believe in the fact that like if you don't work on you nothing is necessarily going to stick you kind of have to realize whatever is going on up in your mind how is that affecting what's going on? I I love watching, like, I think it's my 600 pound life or something on TLC. And the doctor now is like, yeah. Oh my God. He's talking about (laughs) hysterical, but essentially what he does with, with these patients is he'll refer them to therapy Mm -hmm. because he will not do the weight loss surgery or gastric bypass or whatever Mm -hmm. it is. He will not do it until he feels like mentally Mm -hmm. this person that, you know, wants to pursue that is committed and will stick mm-hmm. with it. Oh, yeah. I was like, we all need to see more of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I totally agree because I feel like even, and I mean, I was in, I was in the, you know, teaching women how to lose weight phase for a very, very short amount of time. But even when I was in that chapter and I was like following others and weight loss coaches, it was all the same where It was like, there's no, there's no mindset stuff. There's no like self-love stuff. It's just here, eat this food and follow this workout plan. And, and then your life is going to be fixed. And then, you know, once I kind of like got into that, that's kind of where I learned, like, where is the mindset stuff? Where is the self-love? Because, and, you know, I'm sure you've seen the quote all over the place, but it's like, 
losing weight will not fix a body image problem. It's just, Mm. it it can't happen. You know what I mean? Um, So yeah, I totally agree. You could be underweight and still look at yourself in the mirror and hate what you see. I mean, yeah. We know that we've seen that it's, it's dysmorphia. That's why it's mm-hmm. called dysmorphia. Like it's an altered vision or altered perception of that reality. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, definitely. So, one of my favorite reels that you've done recently is one that said, and this is more on the self-love stuff too. It said, never dim your light for anyone, anything, or anywhere. Were there ever moments where you felt like you were dimming your own light for someone or something else? Oh my God. Yeah. Definitely. I would say, I mean, 2018 was my rock bottom, but kind of leading up to that, even high school, college, I was, I was, I was definitely dimming my light for majority of people in my life because Mm. I, I came from this place of like, I just wanted to be liked. I just wanted validation. I wanted to be accepted. I just, I just wanted that feeling. And it felt like growing up, no matter what I did or no matter how much I showed my true self, I never received that. I never received mm. validation. You know, I was cheated on. Friends stabbed me in the back. It was just Who like- cheat on a Barbie doll like you? Can we just say that? For crying out loud, oh, real? <laughs> real? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. The audacity, the audacity. But anyway, that's what that it does to you. Exactly, more about them. Um, but yeah, so after watching all of these things happen, it, it subconsciously taught me that like, who I was, wasn't enough. And so now I was building that definition of myself of like who I actually am and my true self can't be shown to other people because this is what I'm going to get in return. Mm. So from there, I did my light. I I thought I was this, this person and I try to be a different person and wear different clothes and listen to different music. And like, I was, I was subconsciously like, just trying to mold myself into this perfect ideal little, you know, package yes. with a bow just to please everybody else. And that kept going and going and going until probably the end of 2018, where I met my current partner. And it was kind of like, I don't have to pretend to be mm, anybody else. I don't, I don't such have a relief. to. Yeah, I don't, I don't have to pretend to, you know, like this music and wear these types of clothes. I get to be whoever I am and I'm going to then be met with that like unconditional acceptance. And so kind of from there, it was like one baby step after another of learning, like I can be who I am. And so from there, it kind of just matured into everybody in my life where like, this is me. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. And and that's that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, there's something, oh man, what is it about 2018? Like, oh my God, you had your thing. I had my thing, which was somewhat more so career related, but along the same lines in that I felt like I wasn't making my boss happy. And for somebody that was so career oriented and I really wanted to stay in radio and make it work and blah, blah, blah. And it just was a toxic environment. Like I, I had, it took a long time to mm-hmm. accept the fact that it was to the point where I was like suicidal ideation. And I was like, cause what am I, if I don't have this job and if right. nobody's giving me confirmation that I'm doing well, and all I'm hearing is the things that they want me to fix mm-hmm. air quotes. Mm-hmm. It's like, ah, like something about 2018, man, like for real it year, it was a year, it was a year, <laughs> <laughs> but it took it, but it took outpatient therapy and specifically a course in like mindfulness to help me like put those, some of those thoughts on pause and just say, okay, I can't really change whatever it is that they're doing on their end. All I Mm -hmm. can do is manage my own emotions and manage my own thoughts. And if I need, you know, to take a hot minute, I can make sure that my mind is just blank Mm -hmm. and that I'm not focusing on that. I have the control over that. They don't. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's something ooh, that I wish I could, yeah. you know, continue preaching to the world too. But mm-hmm. it's so important to just admit that, okay, there are going to be hard times. It's going to happen. It's normal for people to have some sort of low in their life, mm-hmm. which is why, I, you know, I, which is why I appreciate you sharing, you know, what you did just now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's another reason why I really like doing what I'm doing and posting what I'm posting, because I think it shows like, we are at the end of the day, we're just, we're human beings. And it's like, we're going to have moments of 
you know, darkness. We're also going to have moments of light and happiness and success. And, you know, I actually, a couple weeks ago, I got a tattoo on the back of my arm. It says dance, um, which I think kind of like wraps into what we're talking about. But essentially it's a quote by Alan Watts. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, but this quote, it's, it's, he says the meaning of life is like the meaning of dancing. So with dancing, the point isn't to get to a certain point of the room the point of dancing is just in the dance itself. So the point Mm. of life and the point of living is in the experience of life. And so with that, you have your highs, you have your lows, both are normalized and both are totally okay. And navigating the moment as it's happening. As is, exactly. Live. Ah, okay. Exactly. Totally understand. And that totally makes a lot of sense. Yeah. For, For me, you know, when I realized that I was molding myself into somebody that I really wasn't just because I wanted to make my boss happy or the radio industry happy. It was the point where they were like, go to country radio and go pretend like you're super excited about like all these country acts and blah, 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 blah. And you're like staring at me right now going, well, of course I wouldn't have that girl do that, but (laughs) it's, but they, this is what they wanted. They wanted like Mm -hmm. the girly girl that was into country, you know, music. And I was trying, I I lightened my hair. I got a horrible blonde by laws job because I wanted it. And I asked my hairstylist for it, but with this dark hair, I was looking like a damn Reese cup. It was not cute. (laughs) It was not it, but I did it because it was 2017 and all the Instagram baddies had the by laws moment happening. Mm -hmm. it, but it's just, it's amazing the things that you will do to make somebody happy. So what I realized, you know, a couple months after that, and a couple months after that, like breakdown, that I had been doing these things to please somebody else, even if I wasn't conscious of it at the time, mm-hmm. it surprised me. Did you ever have that moment where you looked back and it like started to add up and you're like, oh my God, I was doing this and that and this and that, and that just wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I still have moments like that where I think back, where I look at old pictures Mm. because, and and it's interesting because you said at the time you didn't, you didn't, you weren't conscious of it. And I think I was also the same way where like when I was trying to be this different person or trying to be this different version of myself at the time, I was like, oh, well, this is just who I am. I'm being myself. I'm being authentic. But it's like, now that I am actually in that space, I look back and I'm like, I wasn't, I wasn't anywhere close <laughs> to like who I actually was. So, yeah. so yeah, I think it, it, and it still surprises me when I look back at old pictures, like, you know, I, I used to go to country concerts and like, I was like, I love country music. Whereas now like no hate to people who <laughs> love country, but like, I just, it's not my thing. I am cackling <laughs> you too. Me oh too. my god what was it it was that era maybe it was that yeah era. Oh, oh my god I had like the the boots I had the hat yeah. I was going to like oh yeah. yeah 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 for sure because it was mainstream and everybody told us this is what we should be doing yeah Damn and it. it was cool yeah and I, I yeah. just wanted to be cool but now it's like oh my god I can't I can't listen like like no re- no hate to anyone that loves country but it's a pre- just, it's preference yeah yeah it's all, all music is. is yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it still surprises me. <laughs> oh, trust me. I have some of those same pictures and I look back and I'm like, uh-uh, what were you yeah, doing? Yeah, what were we doing, girl? <laughs> well, and so another thing that you post a lot about that I think is especially helpful for other people to just take a tidbit from is the comparison game. You talk a lot about like how fruitless it really is, firstly, and how to sort of avoid it and to focus more so on who you are as a person and that self-acceptance mm-hmm. instead. I was wondering if you could maybe talk about how do you think we can decide to keep going when we do feel defeated or like we're not good enough and those moments of comparison do hit us because you seem to inspire the opposite a lot. Yeah, it's it's hard because I think, and I'm sure you can relate being in this space and being on social media, it's it's extremely hard not to compare yes. yourself to other people. Yes. But I mean, and I actually my last podcast episode was all about comparison. And I admitted that like currently right now, and I mean, even owning a business, and again, I'm sure you can agree, we go through moments of like we have a lot of motivation, we have a lot of inspiration. And then Mm. all of a sudden we hit this like wall of like, what do I do next? And what (laughs) am I doing? Or why isn't this working? Yeah. Yeah. Like what's going on. And so usually in those moments is when I compare a lot, 
But the biggest thing that has really helped me come out of that is reminding myself that like, just because somebody else is doing something does not take away from what I'm doing, or just because Mm -hmm. somebody has something that I want or has something that looks cool does not take away from what I already have. You know, I, I, I find myself getting in this mindset of like, oh, they're, you know, they're posting so aesthetically and they have all these followers and they're so, you know, personable and, and I want to be like that. But then it's like, well, we also have a platform and we also have an audience and we also have a community and we also can show up. And just because yeah. somebody has this ability does not take away from what I can do or what you can do or what anybody can do. And so kind of like coming back to that and like putting my, my blinders on, I know a lot of the time we say like, take the blinders off, but like in those moments I have to put them on and be like, this Poor is shades. what, yeah, like, get like out, everybody. I, I Here see nothing I am. in my peripheral. Exactly. Yeah. And like, that's what I need to like, come back and remember why I'm doing what I'm doing and my mission and my overall purpose. And usually from there, some kind of inspiration will spark and then I'll get my next big idea. And then it's like, we're good again. And, and, you know, it's the same thing, like we said, like there, it's always going to come in waves. You're going to have moments of like, you feel on top of the world. And then you're going to have moments where it's like, you just feel like you're always comparing to other people. But yeah, I think the biggest thing is just gratitude for what I have and gratitude for what I've been able to do and continue Mm -hmm. to do. Because when I am like, so grateful and appreciative of like, my platform and my audience and like the ability to just do this and to show up and to connect with people. It's like that and and honing in on that makes me realize like, I don't care about anybody else. I don't care what Mm. anybody else is doing because like, I have so much like to be thankful for and so much to be grateful for right now. Yeah. yeah. And we, and we forget that it doesn't limit what we can attain still. Exactly. Exactly. There, there's thousands of opportunities for whatever it is that we want to do in life. I do believe that it, whether we create them or whether someone else gives us a leg up and we, you know, maybe mm-hmm. get help toward it. It doesn't limit what we can attain. Cause that's the exactly. thing that always freaks me out. I, I get freaked out and I'm like, Oh, well, Rihanna's already done it. Or oh, Selena Gomez has already done it. No mm-hmm. room for little Val. And it's like, that's not necessarily yeah, true. But, there's, yeah. You're, you're going to be a good fit for something because exactly everybody's got their own taste their own vision whatever it is and you know you need a human for that not just like a stale brand exactly like a better term yeah no exactly completely agree for uh, let's get back into the podcast though because i did I, with love logan yes love the name with love from logan tell me more about the podcast what can what do we hear when we listen to it so I would, so actually I think the podcast is, it just turned a year old, like a couple of oh. weeks ago. So it's just a little baby, but um, yeah, it's, it's all things, self-love, wellness, spirituality, mindset, um, you know, that, that whole world of it. And recently, I mean, I started the podcast with this idea of, you know, coming on and being like, here are some tips and here's how to do this and here's how to do that. But over the, I guess, past year that it's been out and I've been making episodes, I have just found myself using that as an outlet just to be super real and to be super vulnerable. Mm. So my last episode about comparison, I I came on the episode thinking it was going to be like, here's how I deal with comparison. But the whole episode just turned into this, like, I don't want to say a rant, but it turned into just a, a like, zoomed in focus of like what is really going on with myself and I've learned that and not even just with my podcast but with social media in general that the way that I like to consume content and also the way that I like to coach is through my own experience Mm. and other people's experience so like when I listen to an episode if that person is being super real and vulnerable and like saying this is what I'm going through I can relate to that and so from there I I feel more inspired to take action. Whereas if someone's like, this is what you should do for, you know, probiotics or, you know, comparison or stress or something like that, it's kind of, I, it's hard to relate. So with my podcast, Mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's the direction that I want to keep taking it is like just 
peeling back the layers and showing people that like, yes, I am a health coach and yes, I am a self-love coach, but like, I also struggle with those things. And through my struggle is how I also help people and guide people and coach people. So it's a lot. It's a lot of realness. It's a lot of vulnerability. It is a lot of me sharing what I have done in the past, what helps me in hopes to, you know, inspire others to kind of go down that same path. That's how I know I've got a good episode on my hands too. Like if we're, if we're kicking in, if we're giggling mm-hmm. or, if we're, or if we're sitting there like nasty or yeah, like then, yeah. We, then we know that we've, we've hit a connection. We've hit a level of realness that exactly is not only helpful and therapeutic for the two people having a conversation, but anybody listening yeah, as well. People listening. Definitely. Yeah. So what is next for you? What can we look forward to from Logan? I would say so in terms of anything big coming up, I I don't have anything, you know, no programs or anything like that coming. I will say right now, my focus is to to just keep posting on social media in the form of like reels and sharing, sharing that Mm. whole side of it. You know, we talked about my podcast. I am, I am, I, I, I upload episodes bi-weekly. So I am going to be uploading one this week. It should be live Friday. Um, yeah, I just, my, my last big project, actually, I just created a little mini course about how to heal your hormones, how to balance your hormones. Mm. So that was my, my latest thing that is currently out. It's all over my Instagram. You can find it. Um, but yeah, just in terms of like, what is next, just, I'm just going to keep being real and being honest. And, and I'm, I'm very much someone that is like a go with the flow type of person. I used to be someone that like, I always felt like I needed to have something next. And, you know, even oh with God. you, even yeah. with you asking me that question and in my head, I was like, I don't have anything to say. I don't want to say that, but it's like, why not? Like I, I, I can, I go with the flow. And so right now I have nothing coming up, but that's also the flow of life. And, yeah. um, and yeah. So I'm just going to keep being me, keep, keep posting when I'm posting and, and what comes of it will come of it. Absolutely. And that's why I keep that question very general too. Like I, I, the answer is what the answer is. It doesn't, there's no, like, there's no performative desired answer to that question. It just is what it is. And yes, I do like to give people a chance to toot their own horn. That's really the purpose of it. Yeah. But so uh, Logan, I, I can't wait to see it all. Anything that comes. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for chatting with me. You've given us a lot to think about and I can't wait to see more. Oh, thank you, Val. Thank you for having me. I'm happy that we were able to do this and chat about mental health and all, all of the stuff that we chat, chatted about. And I can't wait to continue to connect with you.